Hello and welcome back to WD18, the Watford fan channel for a very special video brought to you by Mad Squirrel. We're going to be down in Mad Squirrel in Watford after the West Brom game, filming our first post-match pint video. So if you're about like good beer, uh, want to say hello, uh, come and join us and please drink responsibly. All right, you could you could tell we've got a very special guest with us. Let me introduce you. Hi, the former Watford striker. He's also uh, Ryan Andrews' dad. Um, and you could tell from his Instagram story yesterday, live and direct from Granada, Mr. Wayne Andrews. How are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. Very, very good. Very, very good. Very Do you good. mind telling us what, you, what you're up to in that beautiful part of the world? So, I am so stopped playing football 11 years ago, went into strength and conditioning. So like, that was the part I enjoyed the most, which was the... Yeah, just looking after yourself part. Like, so that could be could have done the whole coaching thing. Um, then I got the opportunity to move out to here to Grenada in the West Indies to be head of performance for the national team. So mm. I've been there four months now. So I'll be going back, obviously, and then coming back. But I'm here for the nation, the Concacaf Nation League for fixtures. So our next one is in October. We've got Jamaica at home. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. Well, that's a Gifton, isn't it? Yeah, Gifton. So Gifton's like technical director. Obviously, he's my old um, strike partner. I'm sure we've still got the youngest partnership at Watford. We must have done because I think Gifton was about 12. And I was like, <laughs> 15. So, so yeah, I think now Gifton was 15 or 16. I think I was 19, maybe. So, yeah, we've got the, maybe that might have to be checked. But yeah, um, Gifton obviously gave me the job, offered me the job, and I obviously took it. Oh, man. Okay, let's talk about your time, Watford. We have got a sizable part of our audience who are, are the younger, so we like to educate them on their Watford history. <laughs> so let's rewind back to the 90s. When did you join Watford and how did you break um, into the first team? So my, my journey in, in Watford was a bit, a bit strange, right? So I used to go to a soccer school in Brent Cross, where it used to be. Um, started there, used to go back and forth, got released. I don't, no one will know this. Got released when Sunderland League played for a team called North Paddington. Okay. And we played in North Paddington. We played Steve Perriman, who was manager of the band, his son. We played his son's team. Obviously, done what I done, done well. And Kenny Jackets was in that son. And then they offered me a contract, they offered me, they offered me the opportunity to come back and um, come on trial again. Obviously, I said I've been there before. Um, and then from there, I went from going in. In holidays, so I would have. I had Bruce Bowe was there. So I'd be Bruce, Pagey, John Noel, all of these lot were obviously younger, and I was coming in training, and which helped me as I as I went along in my career. Because obviously, sometimes being around bigger, stronger people makes you stronger. The other, it's one of them. The other attack it, or it becomes a bit of a situation. So I've done that, and then um, got offered scholarship, got pro, and then just went from there. So yeah. I did get released and then come back, so it was an up and down journey to being at Watford. I just wanted to ask, I brought up this picture of you at Watford. Talk yeah. to me about this trim. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> Mike Tyson might have been the one. Love it. I think he had it. Yeah, Mike Tyson had it. Mike Tyson, Bobby Brown. I used to get in trouble all the time. The boys would be like, what's that? I said, listen, you don't get it. It's a West London thing. So, yeah, <laughs> and I was obviously from West London, so it was just coming in. So, yeah, it's good, it's good memory to be fair. Very, very good memories. Like, good job you didn't go for the tattoos as well. No, the tattoos, <laughs> the tattoos, didn't, the tattoos didn't, I didn't want no tattoos on my face. I have got tattoos now, I'm like, <laughs> I don't want no tattoos on my face. But yeah, they were good times to be honest. With you. Very, we very mentioned good. you're a striker. What can you compare yourself um, to any player that might be playing now in the elite game? What kind of striker were you? Well, the best, which is weird, the best. So I was a massive Andy Cole, um, massive, massive, massive. So I don't think we were talking about this the other day. How I it'd be interesting if I played if I played in today's game, so a lot of people won't know so I, I was known as Flash. And initially I was called Black Flash. That's what it was, I could say that now. And then they back then they got changed and I was known as Flash. I was, I was super, super, super quick. So the best person now who I'd say who's obviously come to the end of the career, who played how I played would be like Jamie Vardy. Nice. he played always on, on the, the shoulder. shoulder. Like, Always on the shoulder. Jamie Vardy's uh, caused us plenty of trouble at Vicarage Road running off yeah, the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, some penalties. Back, yeah. And, it's, and, it's, and it's even if you... So sometimes when I look back to where I played, 
I'd done a lot of uns- like selfish, unselfish running. I just ran channels when technically, when you, when you think about it, as a centre forward, I could have stayed in between the goalposts. That's my job. Like, fine, but like, my runs would open up a midfielder attacking and I can cross it. So that's, like, when I look at my career, I think there's some little things there. I just, I was a, I was a team player. That's the bottom line of it. I'm a team player. I just got something on a team player. Like, if I scored goals, I've done my job. Scoring goals, I've done it. But my thing was, like, work hard, which is a staple must. And um, the rest should just work from there. Good stuff. And you had a couple of loan spells while you were at Watford, but when was kind of the season where you played your most games? Was it under Glenn Roder? It was, no, so I made my debut. No, I was on the bench. So the FA Cup final, we played, we played Wimbledon and they done the famous dead bug celebration. I swear they done it. They done something. Yeah, we scored. That's it. We scored. And if you look back, Mick Harper stamped through yeah, that's I saw it the I other day, bench. yeah. <laughs> I was on the bench and I was just like, what is happening here? This is mental. And um, then I think he left and Kenny Jackie got the job. Oh, yeah. Kenny, something happened. I think Kenny was, I can't remember, Kenny got the job. Then obviously Kenny knew, knew, knew me. Obviously, I, and there was Pagey, Jono, Dan, Baby. So all these people I played with. So it was, it was, and then you had the old heads of Colin Foster. This is when we used to, we used to train at the Stanmore. And then, um, as that went along, Luther came back, I think. Yeah, Luther came back. And then eventually, Graham Taylor came back. So, like, I was really amongst the old school. Like, you look back now, and respectfully, all these fans would love these people to be around at the club. It's, cra- it's crazy, because me and Griffin were talking about it. If you take a club, just one club, so you look at Chelsea, right? You look at Chelsea, you look at Chelsea's back when you start. And I know a lot of their players. Most are eighty percent of their players, eighty percent of their staff played for the club. Mm. So you can see there's a pathway. So I'm not saying that I technically need to do it. Say I worked there or gift and work there or obviously John Lowe and Jimmy are back there now, but they only in the last couple of years. From a perspective of like I'm a parent who's got a kid who's who's got um potential, I'm less likely to see there's someone there that I know played for the club and understands the club and understands what's happening where I think that's the one thing that this club was happening is people are getting <laughs> kids are getting stolen, maybe picked, whatever way you look at it, because of there was the foundation that what we used to have of having a pathway disappeared, massively disappeared, and then there, it then becomes a case of why. Like, so them going to other clubs isn't always the right thing because mm. technically you're going to a club that you're never going to pay for. So respectfully, are you going to really get into Man City's team? No, you're not. Uh, you know, because they've got too much money so trying to get that balance well and then you don't have moments like we had on Saturday but obviously we're going to talk about that in a bit just a bit more you touched on Graham Taylor um, yeah. what was he like What? how was he with you it was um, the thing that Graham um, had was he was honest he was honesty so even though I live my life now and how I've been with Ryan like if so if I've been dropped, for example, if you drop me, don't say, oh, listen, we're thinking of changing our formation. No, just tell me I'm shit. That's just, just say that you're not good enough. Then, then I can, because what then happens is my reaction should be the, the better reaction, which is I'll show you. That's the long and short of it. Or you crumble. Like, so it was very, with him, it was very black and white. And we, we, we soon, so if you look at how, so I, I saw the, the picture on the, um, after Ryan's goal, the bench, for example, right? That should be box standard in any any family type unit, any club, not even family type. That should be standard, right? Mm. So, one if we all score, the one score we all score. The same as if one goes into battle, we all go into battle. That's it. So it just should be, a, and that's what we had when we had at, um, at Watford. So we had players, obviously, we had players that were talented. But listen, when you got smashed, you might have got smashed, tackled in the tenth minute, and the referee not given a free kick. I've already marked that guy to get smashed in the 20th minute. That's me getting him back for you. But I'm not technically saying it's for you. I just know what I've got to do. So it was just them certain ways. And like I said, him having, at the time, we had Kenny, where he had played under, Lufa. So it was, it was very much where it was it was discipline, but it was discipline that helped. And then he said, all the boys have come through the system. So when we, and this is obviously, you'll understand, this is like Cuba's time. We were going out into Watford. 
no no players going out in Watford ever. <laughs> right? So we're going bar reason, we're going places. And we know we're going now, but we also know that technically, even though we're not, but we are, we're representing the club. Yeah. So I might not have I might not have a, a kit on, but I'm representing the club because there was times where one time we went out. I went out, I went out back home. I just went out somewhere. It was a local place. It wasn't even a night out. And then the next day, like, Graham said to come to say, oh, you have a good night out? <laughs> I'm like, how am I meant to answer this? Like, yeah. <laughs> he said, oh. So he knew everyone. He knew all the bouncers, knew all the clubs. So it's not even like he'd go and check. If something went wrong, it would get back to him. So because of that, like I said, we had the tight uni and just knowing we knew where we were with him. So obviously him not being around now, like, it's it's really really sad because I honestly believe the club wouldn't be would have been further towards where trying to go now, like clean about six years ago, quite like like getting so he would have been like that, that person getting old people. But like, I might have been working at the club for example, so I might be head of performance now at Watford, but I've been a player. So I think that's the one thing. Them these sort of clubs, you need old, you know, you need players that maybe. The, the club or the fans that can relate to you. and that's because all, all they want to do is just is just talk about old times. <laughs> that's long yeah. sure they want to talk about old times. So. It was it was good to see Luther Blissett on the pitch um, as a club ambassador before the game. So hopefully he can come in and yeah. really, really make a difference. Because just hearing what you're saying, it's so important. Um, and just on that theme of kind of going out, did you ever meet Elton John and get invited to any of his parties? No. So when, so I remember. <laughs> I remember one time, this is obviously like I'm young, I'm the, I'm the new pro, so I've gone from old school like cleaning boots, for example, to like, these kids, I, these kids nowadays, and that may sound like I'm being an old man, but <laughs> we just have to knock on the door to go to the first team changing room and that, like, you couldn't just walk in, and like, so them little things, I know they may sound silly, but they, you take them through with your life, so you, as you're getting older, it's, it's just manners and just morning, good afternoon, evening, all that, it just naturally runs off, so I remember one time we come in, I can't remember who we were playing, and they've got um, elders coming in. Make sure you make sure you uh, make sure you're not in a towel. I'm just like, what? <laughs> just make sure that you've got you've got towel on. And I'm just like, I've gone over my head at the time. And I'm just like, they're like, yeah, he'll like you. He definitely like you. And, <laughs> and that was the one time because he never used to come to games as much. But he'd obviously be in and out um, back then. And then obviously um, we then went. On when I'd sometimes go to, to I went to an occasion one time at we got invited to a party at Princess Diana's house at the squad. Nice. This was at in Kensington that he wow. obviously arranged because he knew her. But again, back then there was no phones or anything. It went over my head. I just know that I'm all I kept on thinking was, oh, I'm close to home. That's all they want. Like, <laughs> really, but yeah, they were like I said, they were they were good good times of having people like that. Even like having him back at the club because he'd done the concert a couple of years ago, didn't he? Yeah, it was good. It was great. Yeah, and I am, um, and obviously he's just finished his world tour, so he's never going to tour again and stuff like that. So it is good just looking back and knowing that them sort of people were associated with us. Absolutely. A couple of questions we had on Twitter. Um, one from Tim Rose, one from Gary Lawson. Um, what was your favourite moment in a Watford tour and your favourite goal? Easiest question ever. <laughs> not counting away. Oh, so yeah. we had gone. I swear we were two nil up. Yeah, we were two nil up. I started. Me and Tommy. I think Tommy. Tommy scored. I think Gary Ford scored. If I'm not wrong. Two nil up. They then scored two goals, and I think the last one must have been in like the 85th minute, something like that. It was really, really late. So we're this hard, and this is when Wayne Flash speed. You ever see the goal? Like, got. I remember getting played in. It's goal kick. You got no. It's goal kick. Got flicked on, and I got in. You had no right to get there. No I saw right. You watched it just before this. No, yeah, it's no, I don't know. I had no right ever. <laughs> like, you must be thinking, what the hell? Like, and you look back then. This is when I was super fit because it's like the last minute of the game, and I'm still doing like high intensity running and that. Got got there, scored the goal, taking my shirt off. This is when you went and the new ruler come in. Taking my shirt off, threw it into the crowd. Don't know what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> Tommy's then got my shirt back. He's trying to cover me to put the shirt back on because I'm going to get booked. I'm in my head, I'm like, Tommy, I'm black. The top yellow. This ain't really going to work. They're going to know. 
clearly that I'm not the top one. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, and then obviously he won 3 2. So they were good memories. And my first, I think my first goal was in a cup. I think we played Plymouth. Am I in Plymouth? We played Plymouth, I think it was at home. And that was my first home. I went on a little bit of a run of scoring goals all the time as well. I went a little bit of a run like five and six games or something crazy like that. So, yeah. How many I, goals I did you score good. for Watford? I think I might have got 10, 11. And it's, just, it's weird because, like I said, my injury killed my career. Like, me and Griffin were talking about this, funny enough. We went on the walk this morning. And um, it's op- opportunities, and this is what I said to Ryan. So, Someone else's misfortune is your is your gain. That's the type of football it is, right? So it's not nothing. You've done nothing wrong. I remember we played. We had a game. I don't know who was going to have a game in the week, and there was a reserve game the next day. That was meant to have been the same day that we played the game. I think it was. So then, because of that, obviously, as you do, we, we had to play for a little while. So there was loads of us that played in that game. So the people that were subbed played in the game. So again, it was a game that I shouldn't have been playing in. That's the way I look at it. So I've gone in done that, broke my ankle, then I'm out for seven months. So I'm on the I'm a full squad player. So I'm in out doing like doing stuff. And then behind me was Tommy Smith. And then obviously his me and Tommy are good friends, right? But then his career takes off because ultimately I'm not there for seven months. And then in that time I I, I got back just in time for a few games before the Fulham. So obviously I got a, a, a medal when we won the league. But got was stopped for the last game against Fulham. But by that time, like, it was too late for me, basically. Like, and it was one of those things. Like, so I don't, I don't have any regrets, but them, them little things where, like you said, it puts your career back because that's game. That's like 30 games. That might be 10, 12 goals and, and stuff like that. But I was always, like I said, Gifton was doing well. Me and Gifton had come to the youth team. Like, Clint Easton was there. So I was very much, like, if my friends are doing well, then I'm cool. And then, Good uh, and, yeah, ended up talking to non league, but football's like that. I don't have any, um, I don't have any regrets um, like that, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, let's talk about maybe a new Watford chapter. That's uh, yeah, yeah. it's not new, um, but let's talk about your boy, uh, Ryan Andrews. Yeah. Um, let's go again right to the start. When did he first get into football and how did he end so, up signing for Watford? Crazy as well. So he. You might, I don't even remember. There was a, Steve Palmer came back to Watford as sort of like a director. I think he'd been with England. It's been, like, so Steve Palmer was always that guy. When we go to games, and he used to have the, the, the Times paper in that back then. I mean, it's a big paper, and he's at the front of the bus. I'm like, what's <laughs> but he was way, he's so advanced of us, it was crazy. Like, we're all intelligent to a certain degree, but he was just gone clear. And I used to think, how are you even a footballer? Because you're so intelligent. So he came back and he was at, so Ryan was at Casterbury. Yeah, Ryan was at Casterbury, where next to his school. So Casterbury obviously had a, a senior team and obviously his, his neighbour, um, little boy, no, the neighbour's little boy was in the team and he was, his dad was the manager. So we're going forward at that. And then I remember, because Ryan had a try to Tottenham. Okay. I'll never forget this, right? So he had a try to Tottenham. So i am gone to a game, to that, that Casterbury um, um, football club, and I, again, I used to just go the same morning and stand at the top of the hill. I remember standing at the top of the hill. And then I seen the, the, the managers point towards me. So some guy, I know this guy's coming to talk to me now. And I know exactly what he's coming to talk to me about. And I'm like, you've got 30 seconds because I'm not a normal dad. You might not know who I am. but I'm This not is a big dad, sales so pitch. Don't, mm-hmm. don't give me any spiel. So then he's come over and he said, I like your boy. Um, anyway, it was a scout. I don't know who for the life of was, but he knew who I was. So oh, yeah, I used, to, I used to watch you. Like, just scouted you back in the day. So, so his picture's gone. So anyway, I've taken Ryan to, to I've taken Ryan to this Tottenham Tottenham thing, right? And he's gone and he's I'm watching it and he's going around. And he might not like me. This is like this is like what I'm saying. So he he's gone, and I'm like, how do you like? He said, I don't like it. Then. What do you mean? I just don't like it. I want to be a WWE wrestler. You can do whatever you want, son. Well, <laughs> do whatever you want. So my thing was. The minute that he wasn't having fun, he's, he's getting taken out straight. So then he went back to, and that's a bit like how I started. When you're at them, and it's a bit sad now because kids going to academy is so young, so they can't even play in tournaments. All of that little, um, you know what I mean? All that stuff when you're going and the 
families are all there. They can't even do that. So he's gone to that. Done, stayed there for about four years because Ryan used to play up front as well, right? So he's played up front, done that, and then Watford came back in. Steve Palmer was there at the time, and I'm just like, so his mum's gone off, they want to take him. I'm just like, you know what? I can go because I trust I trust the person that I'm giving him to. That's mm. a long and short. Um, stayed there, and obviously he got in at eight, um, and then just went from there. And then as, as he was going along, he was playing up front. I'm watching his game play, and I'm just, I'm just like, no, nah, he's not that guy. He can't play in back to goal. Back to goals are hard. It's a hard position. Sit the forward. People are thinking, yeah, it's all where the, yeah, it's where all the glory is, but technically it's the hardest position. Mm. You always have to be on a half turn. Someone's not coming straight at you. If I'm a defender, I can see you in front of me. It's easy. So, like, so as we're going along, I said to him, I remember saying to him about 12, I said, you're going to be a winner or a right, or a right back. No, no, because obviously all kids want to do is score goals, isn't it? <laughs> You're going to be in I said, you need to be able to see the picture. And then as we've gone along, then the club by seeing this, then he's played right back, and then you're now dealing with a kid that all he wants to do is score goals, and he's not scoring goals now. Like, and I'm just then explaining to him, listen, have, having assists is as great a feeling as scoring a goal. Trust me, because like, you're just feeding people. And, and as we've gone along in football term now, you've got people that are happily would assist people. You think De Bruyne got 20 just assistant, uh, uh, you're just doing that, yeah, finish that, yeah, finish that. And then you know that your, your final pass basically made it off. So that's the, that's the long and short of it. So, yeah, and then he obviously went from there and then the journey, the journey's been um, like he said the other day, where he tech, no, he wasn't got. He he wasn't gonna. He almost got released on the fact that. So when when they're in the academy, they they got like a traffic light system a system yeah. where it shows them where they're going and interaction. So we'd go, but me and Tom would go would sit behind him. So he'd sit there. You're in front of him, and we're behind him. And like there's times where they're looking at me. They obviously know who I am. They're looking at me by talking to him, and I'm just like. Don't look at me, talk to him. Because if I need to say something, <laughs> I'll say something when we get home. But yeah. I've always wanted to be one of those people, listen to what people are saying. Because as you get older, you'll listen to someone, but you'll filter it out. You'll filter the stuff out. You'll take what you want to take in. So there was one time where he's gone, and it was hard because what people don't understand, these emotions that these kids are going through is crazy because they're still trying to find who they are. So take football out of the equation. People are going out. People are doing this. Even when I started, all my friends were going to college and going to parties. And I've got a football game on a Saturday um, and I couldn't be able to go back to London because I'm thinking Watford might as well have been in like Timbuktu back then because I don't have a car. So I'm like, I ain't going back home. So I just missed a big period of, of life outside of football. And then um, he obviously, the year that, that was the only time that I think I interjected where I went, right, listen to what they're saying. Like I said, because, so you go year, 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 two years and the scholar. That's how it happened. So, he just about got that. No, he was told to, to fix up. So I said, you've got a year. I said, I'm telling you now, find the person in your group, whoever it is, and be like them. I said, be that person. For a year, be that person. So if they listen, then listen, just be them. So I said, sometimes I get it because you'll be amongst a group and you're all like laughing and joking and stuff like that. And it, I get it because you're still a kid. I said, but if you can name it down now, it will help you. And then obviously you went from there into the first year scholar that played eight, he played eighties at 15. I can't remember who the youth team manager was. Um, and then obviously he's gone through that stage and people don't understand Ryan's birthday is on the 26th of August. So the best way I can say is that parents out there would understand it is so super late, it's crazy. Because a week later, everyone is birthday. So even school years, he'd be behind. He was behind everyone because of how late his birthday was. So you think a couple of days later, he's the oldest in the class. Now he's the youngest. So development-wise, watching kids, that's why I'm, to be honest with you, that's the biggest um, reason why I'm proud of him because physicality-wise, he's always up against the big boys. Always. No matter what happens because they've got a year on him. So as you go along, and I remember um, John McDermott, who was obviously at Watford, at England, he said that, when, when scouts or people are looking at so Harry Kane's got a really late birthday. I think his birthday is in July. Don't call me that. People that have late birthdays, the statistic, 
are, and they they come through that period, they end up becoming players because they've always had to be up against it. They've always had the big boys, always had to fight. So they've, they've had to fight their way to get to where they are. I'm not saying that they, that they end up having a, a, a great career, but they've had the fight in them from young. So um, doing that and, and going along was um, massive for him. And like I said, he, he's taken... He's taken the opportunity. I think that's what it is. You're given the opportunity. Uh, Wilder is, and this is, the world of my team is actually a little bit surreal sometimes because I think to myself, Wilder's coming and you've got an English man that's decided to go to 21 games because Billy should have no, he was not interested. Facts. He just didn't care, which is cool. You don't want to come to games or you'll send someone reporting the game. So I remember the first time Wilder came, I came in, he was at the first game and he sat, I remember watching the game and he was sat opposite in the old John Stanford was or the main where the director sit. And he'd come and he'd watching the games, watching the games. So now you're showing an interest because you want to see what he's doing what he's got. And obviously you watch Ryan, watch three games. Um and then Ryan started turning the first one. And that's when I said to him, opportunity is crazy. He said sometimes you just take one one manager. Edwards came in, fancied him, he lost him one win like four games then he's gone and then like, and, and that's the one thing I think so everyone's talking about the whole contract issue what what we need is some sort of stability because I'm not even saying this about Ryan and Lowe. some of the players the younger players have been lost in transition because there's been so much change so if all managers got an opinion and I, I, I remember saying to Ryan I said listen a new manager's coming in don't be surprised if you're still over in the scholar because he was he was just travelling over to, to, to do, I said, don't be surprised if you're still a scholar, like you're still a scholar. So I said, you just have to take that on the chin because this man might have plans and he doesn't. You're not part of it. I said, but technically speaking, because you got the last six games. Because let's be honest, he was Barry, dead. He, yeah, Barry, he knew full well he was getting this job because the turnaround from when he got the job to, to it's like three days. So he would have been watching the games of some sort. So I said, that might have been a blessing for you because he was watching the last six games and you played in the last six games. So you're a talent or that's emerging or you're someone that you can use. I said, so that would have helped you um, along your journey as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that was the best thing that happened from last season and especially yeah, what Chris yeah, Wilder yeah. done, giving us faith. And I remember that game against Reading, he came on um, at half time, And, you know, when you just see a player and they kind of stand out, obviously there was loads of academy yeah, players. Yeah, and I, I, was, I, I think he could have started that game. I was a bit like, because that guess was yeah. had no reason to, to, I looked at him thinking, you put in four other young kids. You might as well just play him as well. Like it was a dead, it was a dead rubber because even Redding's team weren't that great. And when you actually think about the first goal, it was crazy because it should never have gone in. So and then the second one was, it, I mean, it's one of them ones you're thinking, yeah, you could have started him. And then that's like you said, he come on, and for me, it was, it was the the calmness. He surprised me because it was the calmness of it and yeah, composure. He, yeah, like you, you can't just come into a team and look like you. If I didn't know who he was, I would have thought that he had, been, he had played about four or five games before that. I would have thought he played a bit. So, was, was there a moment even before that game when you thought, yeah, he's got a bit, I think he could, I think he can make it? Whether it's like... Yeah, it, it, it was... Do you know what it was? It, there was a point where... So he, he was playing under-23s at... When he was he? He would have been 17. So that's what it was. I was looking at these boys. I'm playing, you're playing under-23s, obviously... The changes are under twenty one now, but you're you're up against big men. So I'm looking. So yeah, my job. So I'm looking at these people. And I'm thinking, right, he's got massive quads. Look how big his hamstrings are. That's what I'm looking at. I'm thinking, Jesus, <laughs> crazy. And like, you're not backing down. But he was. He, he's like me. Like, that's how I play. Like, you might batter me, but I ain't gonna go miss it. Like, and then that, that was when I thought, you know what? Like, I think he's actually got a chance. I used to say, you've got a chance, because that's all it is. You've got a chance. Like he's, he's still in this transition now, and you speak you speak to it. I speak to Ryan, and we have the conversations all the time. And I'm like, you can be anything you want to be. Right now, you can be anything that you want to be. And like the the whole England thing, for example. So he was on standby for the World Cup in the summer. Really? Right. Yeah. So he's on standby. I think I can actually say that. So he got told just before just before the six, but that come off the back of six games. That's it. So even if you look at levels, and I try to explain it, so you're one, you're one step from the promised land. That's crazy. Like you're in the championship, and then the next step's the Premier. There's not, you're not in League Two and having to go up. So you playing how you're playing, and, and 
you're nowhere near where you can be and you're still learning. Don't get it twisted. You've not, and I said this to him before, you're nowhere near where you could be. You've just got crazy potential. So that's also potential alone. You've got potential to, to play in it. So I said, all them little things that you're doing now will help you get to it. So you're getting seen from England. I said, to get recognised from England, at, so you look at it, think about it, you've got players, they'll be like Man City, Arsenal, Tottenham, Chelsea, Watford. Like it's not meant. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. I said so. I mean, he's in the squad of Lewis Hall, who's just gone for what forty million to Newcastle. You you look at so all these boys, and and, and I said to him, that's what where it's actually have to. He has to start looking at himself and understand that he's got to give himself more credit because these boys have been in the system since they were twelve. So it's not like I said. You've just come along from nowhere, and they're like, who's that guy? So then, when you've gone on the camp, you're still going to half get judged. It's like when you was in the school football team and you're just. Yeah, you know I mean, everyone's got good boots and you come with rubbish boots. I think, who's this guy? But you might be going to fail. I said, so you're still going to get judged on on them sort of like thinking, well, okay, he's in the championship, but how good is he? Because these big club mentality things, they just because they're higher than everyone else, um, they got more ability. I said, so once you start seeing your potential and what you can do, it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 um, it's crazy. But we have a good relationship, to be honest with you. We're like, we're, He's very much, I'm very much dead, but we love our job. Because even today, when I said, when I put in my post, that he wouldn't, he's going to say, Dad, stop saying it, I'm bored. I said to him, you will not be able to mark me when I'm there. <laughs> and he says, yes, I will. That's okay, but I don't want to do that. So it's our little battle that we have. It's never going to be able to obviously be seen, but it's a little battle. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm super proud of him, to be honest with you. Just yeah, you should be. I mean, I, I watched before this, the video you guys done with the club, uh, a year or yeah, so back, and yeah, you yeah, could yeah, just yeah. tell your guys' yeah. relationship is really great to see. And I just want to talk about Saturday. Obviously, unfortunately, you could have been there, but no, tell no. us about Saturday. How you? I know no, you could I, have watched him, but how you found yeah, out no, that he scored his first yeah. professional goal? So he um, told me the day before that he went because obviously we speak. So he said he's not starting. So I was just like, listen, just be ready because the way what the play with high press and statistically everyone's seeing 55 to 60 minutes the manager makes three subs standard it's not even it's a staple in that there's no one so if he does one sub in the next six games people will be like what the hell's happened here it's always like three but the three that he that he does always complement each other i said but if you look i said to him you'll get on you might just maybe get 15 minutes because that's sometimes what happens when jez comes on for you i said you might get 20 minutes, minutes. I said, just if you get on hopefully the game's a little bit more stretched and Respectfully to, to Jez as well, they're two different people. They're two different players. I said, so that balance works. So if you're winning and all of a sudden you've come on with legs and you're stretching them even further and someone else is going and they're tired, I said, you're going you're gonna to get more opportunity. And so his mum's called, no, his mum's texted me and said he's got on in the seven exciting minute. And then I had, a, I had an app that said what for the squad. And then three minutes later, my phone rang, and it was his mum. And I was just like, "Please, please, please, please don't say what I think it is," because I knew, I knew straight away. I'm thinking, "No, no, it doesn't make it. Don't, it didn't make sense. None of it made sense to, for her to be calling me. When what's she going to tell me? Oh, they want one nil? No, because that's not what we have a conversation about." And then she's like screaming. Then I'm hearing the fans, and I remember sitting there singing, "He's one of our own," and I'm just like, oh, "Man." <laughs> and I, just, I knew, I knew, like I said, I just knew. I had a feeling deep inside that it was gonna um, be be a goal. But like I said, my even my post and what I done on my page um, on Instagram was it was like raw emotions. Cause I'm, like I said, my you always want to be there in certain moments when when your kids are doing stuff. It might be like the first time they walk or the first time they speak or you miss stuff, but you're still part of it. And all you want to do is know that. His moment is, as much as it's, I'm um, gutted, it's still his moment. And that's the main thing that I knew that he was happy. And, and obviously, once I saw the goal, and then we spoke afterwards, and then he showed me the celebration, and even the interview when he said he watched it, he'd watch it 100 times. He actually would watch it 100 times. <laughs> like, that's raw. That's like raw, raw, raw emotion. Like raw emotion. Because he's quite a calm lad, isn't he? He's quite yeah, yeah, calm. Yeah. So to see that celebration, it, it, you could tell yeah, him that he doesn't get he doesn't get flustered like that. The only time, like him and obviously Shaq that's gone alone, 
they come through the system together, right? So I think that's the only maybe time if he scored that Ryan would go because they're told tight, there's two friends that like, but like you said, he's gone from that to like you said, just going and embracing and it couldn't have gone any better than it went because it was towards the home fans, it was Academy Day, uh, Harry Hornet was in like the Hornet was in the he's in the corner. It couldn't have gone I swear to you, good I looked at it now and I think this couldn't have gone. The only other thing that could have gone mental is he took his top off and got booked. That's the only <laughs> other thing that could have just made it perfect. So like the excitement. But the excitement was like knee slide, get in, celebrate, and then your players have to come to you. But I, I said the only other added thing is, is imagine that was the winning goal. Mate, I said to you, that was the, I know it was a winning goal, but technically it went sooner, but if that was the only goal in the game. It would have been, it would have been many. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy for him, like I said, because I and the people on here will see it. Like Ryan gets into good, good positions, right? He gets into great positions. I said, you get into there was a, I think it was a Plymouth game. He had two shots, and both got blocked. Take that, take them shots again. They, they are going. You know I mean? So sometimes it's margins, but also what does happen? He takes two. So what happened in how he scored? It's like if I'm a centre forward and I haven't scored for ages. Sometimes you have to score them dirty goals just to get you to know that you've got confidence, right? Yeah, yeah. So I said, like, knowing you, so fans know you can get the ball. You know, they're, they're not saying shoot if they don't know that you can't strike a ball. They're not. They, they, the whole crowd went shoot. So, and then it's gone in. So everyone in the crowd is buzzing because they said shoot and he scored. I said, but now you know, if you can tidy up, because what happens is you get, I've watched him, you'll get so anxious. He's almost like a score here. And then he forgets that his touch is, his touch and gets bigger where it is, so he's got a good touch. And then the next thing you know, suit two thing where he, if he just relaxed for a second, had a shot, he'll 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 um he'll have um he'll have opportunities. But I, I do generally feel that he's got another couple of goals in him. Absolutely. Can't wait to see him. Um yeah. couple of a couple of other questions before we end. We've talked yeah. about milestones quite a lot. What do you reckon is the next milestone? What's the next target for Ryan? I think the fans would like to hear this. The next milestone is to, to get a new contract. I think that's that's the. I think is it a milestone or you you go on? So like you said, the club most probably got it in hand. They understand what they've got player wise and what they want to build around. So like you said, it's not. And I remember saying to him when he when he officially, when he first got his scholar. I say scholar when he first got his first pro. He got two years of year option, and mm-hmm. I said to him at the time, "Do you know how big that is?" Yeah. So they don't give out two years of your option. You get one year of your option. I said, so two years of your option, they can see something. So I can see it, but obviously they can see it as well. So that contract getting ripped up, and it's not even about, I said to him, it's not about money, it's about having a foundation. I said, if you're still 19, you might be at Crawford for another three years, or you might get to the point where you've done so well that the club and the fans will be happy that you can go. But you, I mean, I said, so... Your next port of call is, is literally to um, secure a contract, but I think it will come. It will come. It will come. Like, come it will on, Gino. Sooner. Come on, Scott. Get that pen and paper out. Um, yeah, yeah. It'll be, it'll, be, it'll, be sooner, it'll be sooner rather than later, I'm sure. I'm sure, sure. And, and, well, another target. If, you're, if you've got 11 goals, um, it's going to be interesting to see how long it, it takes. You know what? Like, people say to me, right, I have no... I've got the least amount of home or all of that stuff. <laughs> I, I want, first of all, I know you're going to have a better career than me, right? I don't care. That's that's what I think as parents or as people, you want your kid to be, to be better than you. I'm not in competition with my kid like that. Maybe when we play ball, when we do temping bowling, yeah, that's different. <laughs> that's a game. But other than that, and I said to you earlier, all my wrongs, I want to make it right. So, I want him to go on and like, be, like, score. The only thing, the only thing that I held on to <laughs> with her banner, this is like, I said, I scored my goal before you. I was younger than you when I scored my goal. So, so technically, that's, I've won. That's the only <laughs> thing I think I can win. I said, but going on and scoring goals and, and, and making careers, like I said, I've never, I never got called up for England. So all of these things I, I want him to do. So you, you get so you get called up to under 20, your next step should be 21. The next step should be senior. That's how you've got to look at it. Like you don't want to just be like, oh, I've had one cap. Don't get me wrong, that's a good thing to do, achieve. But you want to do that and... and as you're going along, better yourself. And I'm trying to get into him. He's got it, but just having more responsibility, more ownership. That's what it is. So that's just me talking as a as a football dad and understanding more ownership. 
be, be the best version that you can be. I think that's the best thing in life because opportunity that these young players, not so much, not just Ryan, but these young players have that we that I didn't have, are crazy. Like, like, I said this in the interview the other day, like, they're given a box, right? With everything. They're really given a box with everything in it, everything. And as they go along, they lose certain bits as it comes out or they have to, where we had to, we had a box and we had to fill it. But like, imagine having a box that you've already got that same like, by the way, if you take this box, you can become a very successful um, like player that's wealthy. Do do what you got to do. But as they go along, they, they lose bits. So whether that be, I don't know, someone who, who, who goes out or their friends that ain't got the best interest. Ryan's got a very small circle of friends, which is why he is how he is. But he's got friends, he's got a lot of friends, but he's people are his people. And it's like you have a group of friends that you're friends and they're your tight friends. And that's why um, he doesn't suck or fall um, like too, too terrible like that. So he knows his people, he knows what he's about. So that's the only thing I'll say to him. Um, and I know obviously he likes the program of Super Bowl. He likes the, 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 the channel as well. So it's good. Wicked. But yeah. just, just to end, and you kind of you kind of touched on there, but just to end, have you got a message for Ryan that you, you'd like to do for going forward? I, I think, like you said, it's for me, it's um if you can handle your emotions, you can handle anything in life. So sometimes, like you said, they're ups and downs, and there's little there's little points where I've said to them before and I've said to, to most kids that you're always going to be, you always want to, everyone wants to be like that in life. But at some point, when, when you're going down, that's when you find out who the real, real person's about. That's when you know what you're really about. Because you're going to go back up again. And I think, like, when I've spoken to him on occasions, and, I, and like you said, I've, I've always been that dad that I don't, I'm not that, I'm not like, rah, 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 rah. I'll, I give some information, and then I step away. Even, like, on, on a game, I'll be like, enjoy it, show them what you got. And just no matter what happens, just, just to remember the occasion. Because I, when I play, I think you forget how lucky and fortunate you are. So listen, there's people watching. There's people watching you that would love to be in your position for a millisecond, like just to be able to say they play football. Or, or they, and I said, so you're you're actually. And I said to him, like, embrace the the, the, the place that you are. So that embrace what because you're you're basically. You're playing for them. That's the long and short of it. You're playing for all these supporters. So you're going to be popular. You're going to be well, and you're, you're very well managed, right? But you're going to be that person because you're a local boy. They ain't had it. They have not had it for so long. They've not had it. So embrace it if it means you have to take pictures, do all of that stuff. I'll tell you straight, do it. Like, he went, he went, oh, before you go, he went, um, <laughs> he went up to in Watford. It was late evening. These three boys have walked past. And obviously they're like, oh, it's fine, it's fine. You know you do that whole sh- 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 thing. And he's walking back to his car in Palace and like they're following him. <laughs> and like he's gone up the escalator, he's turned around and going, boys, you want a picture? Oh, you <laughs> and I said to him, you realise how that little thing there right now, that's life to them. Yeah, they're going to tell their it. friends, you're now, basically that's like someone now going to the shop and I've got Andrew in the back place. That's it. I said, so them little things, embrace it. Um, and the fans, like I said, the fans have taken to him, but they'll, just, they'll love him even more. So that's all that I'll say on that one. Brilliant. That was amazing. Thank you, Wayne, so much for your time. Right. Um, really appreciate it. Best of luck with everything over there. Hopefully yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. see you at Vicarage Road soon, I'm celebrating a live goal of Ryan scoring. I'm back. I'm back. I'm coming back. So I did actually say to him the other day, can I have a blue, blue away top? <laughs> so he did actually say, get yourself. But we'll <laughs> So I think I'll... I'll um, November. My birthday is in November, so I'll be back for that block of games. Good so, stuff. yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Regardless of whatever happens, I'll be at the games. So, yes, if anyone sees me, come say hello. I don't buy it. I won't talk. I'm trying, I'm trying to, at some point, um, his little, so she's got a little eight year old sister, and she loves Ryan, loves him. So, she actually plays football as well. Nice. Um, so, I'm going to try and speak to the club for her to be a mascot so oh wicked she walk, yeah she can walk out of a big brother and one one little one little thing before you go yeah go uh, on uh, this is a big shout out so I don't know did you know that I had a kidney transplant no yeah so so I've had a I had a kidney transplant seven years ago now so I was having dialysis 
next door in the hospital. Okay. Yeah. Um, like I said, this so like some people. So when they when they see me, how they see me, they'll understand. There's a lot of there's a lot of background to what it was like. So I was on dialysis for eight eight months, and even going back to Ryan, like it affected him a lot because obviously dad's in the hospital. Like so, I had a, I had my transplant like seven years ago. So I'm on anti rejection tablets, still all of that. But just a big shout out to like I want to try and like, whether it's to give the people that are on dialysis because I was having it three times a week for four and a half hours a day. So going back, I think I could handle it. And I said this to people because of, because of how I was brought up along with Graham Taylor and mentally being strong. I'm not saying so I get, I get people that people, some people suffer with stuff like that. So I'm not saying like they should be that, but for me, it was just being around, being in there, knowing why I was there, locking onto why I was there and then just thinking, you know what, it hasn't done. If, I, if it doesn't get done, then obviously I'm not going to be here. So if there are people that are on dialysis or had a transplant, big shout out to you, basically. Um, and if anyone wants to talk, I'm here. Because I, I do do um, stuff for the kidney research. So like I said, um, I just want to try and be, as best as I can, some sort of inspiration. So even though you've had it or you're going through it, like, you can still live, basically. Thank you so much, Wayne. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. Uh, smash the like button on your way out. Um, and give yeah, Wayne some... All, all records on likes, shares, everything. Do you. Do whatever you need to do. Get, and give Wayne some love on his socials. If you've seen his Instagram, he's still absolutely shredded. So I'll put all the descriptions <laughs> in this video. Check him yeah, out. You, you can, yeah, you can um, tag me in it. Like I said, you'll, you'll enjoy my, uh, my page. <laughs> Thanks to Wayne and everyone who all watched. Right. And finally, up the audits.